and there was a period of time he was doing these soundies, which are similar to what we think of as music videos. And we don't really have any to look at, but they somewhere they've described these, and she described them with sounded kind of characteristic of his style, with the wheels coming in and out, and all kinds of weird shots, and they had fun um, montages. And uh, the time period, uh, if maybe you know this, is, uh, how many people know when sound first came to film? All right, 1927 with the jazz singer, so when film was uh, Thomas Edison, they were messing around with film in the late 1800s. So it was 30, almost 30 years, even after film, that sound was finally, and then the movie, Bessie was 29, 1929? Yeah, there it is. And so you see we're it's at, right at the cutting edge, because it was a slow process, where now everything seems very exponential, it evolved so fast, where then it was a lot slower project, so he was definitely on the cutting edge of sound. So uh, I'll start hearing you clip there. Is that it? Yep. Everybody was coming to see St. Louis Blues, so eventually they, they kind of gave him, shared the billing, and he, he went on to make another film soon thereafter with Duke Ellington called Black and Tan Fantasy. These and a host of other reasons have made Harlem one of the best known spots in the entire world. Returning to New York after more than a year in California, Murphy found the city's drunken, insouciant urbanity as convivial as Montparnasse or early Hollywood. Uptown nightlife loomed large in his personal landscape. Like many whites in artist circles, he had a zest for Harlem glitter, wrote film historian Thomas Cripps, and boasted of his Negro connection. Murphy, for his part, saw it in cinematic terms. I fell in love with the characters and exciting jazz, he wrote. I felt I must capture this excitement in film. And, um, for his third film for RCA, Murphy returned to his earliest inspiration, music. This time he opted for popular over classical, setting, settling in on the hit song, St. Louis Blues. I approached W.C. Handy, who sold us the rights and who did a special arrangement of his classic piece, Murphy recalled. I got Bessie Smith, the greatest blues singer of all times, to play the part of the St. Louis woman and wrote the story for the film, suggested by the lyric. Though Murphy credited his friend Cobra Rubius with introducing him to Harlem, it's likely that he learned of Bessie Smith through Van Vecken, who'd first heard her sing in 1925. For the film, Murphy was especially interested in recreating the authentic feel of an uptown club. I, re I rehearsed the piece in a loft in Harlem and then brought a group from Harlem to our studio, he wrote. To capture the spirit, I had created a set which was more or less a duplicate of a Harlem nightclub and peopled it with the real people who frequented this Harlem nightclub. I gave them beer to drink while we set up the cameras and rehearsed the studio. Given his familiarity with early systems for synchronizing film with live music, Murphy readily adapted to the technological demands of sound film production. Knowing that the musical performance was the core of the film, he devised an effective technique for filming Smith, who was not entirely at ease in front of the camera. He set up four cameras synchronized to the master soundtrack so that I would not have to stop the action for close-ups or moving shots and could run the music and song without a break. When the crowd was completely relaxed with beer and the spirit of the nightclub, I called for action and a continuous scene which ran 10 minutes. Bessie Smith's close-ups were taken with a six-inch lens from 20 feet so that there was no self-consciousness on her part which might have occurred had the camera been close to her. Shooting with multiple cameras ganged to a master soundtrack wasn't uncommon in early sound films. As late as 1932, some scenes at Paramount, for instance, were shot with 10 cameras. 
but with a jittery star, a multi-camera setup was essential to movie's concept, Murphy's concept. His direction yielded relaxed, fluid performances by all three principals, Jimmy Mordecai, Isabel Washington, and Smith. 